Hey guys and welcome to a new video in this deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about depth maps and how we can create point clouds with depth maps. So we're going to use a space from hog and face where we're actually like going to use a monocular camera. So we're just going to take a single image and then we're going to use deep learning to actually like create these depth maps and then the depth maps can directly be converted to point clouds. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribed to the channel. It's just a single click and it helps me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also become a member of the channel or a patron if you want help with your projects. If you have some problems, I can help you out, give some guidance and so on if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So here we're just going to jump straight into Hawking Face. So we have these like available spaces. So here we can actually like have a zero shot, shot uh, depth estimation with DPT. So this is the, the DPT model that we're going to use. And then we're going to create like a 3D point cloud based on that um, depth estimation from a monocular camera. So we're just going to take a single image. You can take like whatever image you want. I can show you the link here. I'll throw it down in the description. So you can just go in here, try it out yourself. We're going to then predict the depth map. We're going to estimate the depth in our image. Then we're going to create a point cloud inside of this Hawking face space here as well. And then we will go in. I'll show you some different kind of tools, like how we can actually like open these files up here with like, for example, Open3D and also some other different kind of like uh, applications and also programs that we can open up point clouds with and then we can do uh, other different kind of like processing techniques on top of those point clouds and we can also like visualize them play around with them and so on but here we can see that this demo here is a variation from the original uh, uh, dpt demo and then we can see that it uses this model here so we already have other videos about this on the channel so if you want to write your own code in python for example i have videos here on the channel it's called like meters so depth estimation or like depth maps with meters. So we're only using monocular camera and then we can actually like estimate depth uh, based on our images with the use of deep learning. So if you're interested in how you can implement this stuff here yourself in Python, I have videos about that on the channel. So definitely check that out. Those models are called meters and some of the previous ones or like some of the like latest ones is actually like based on transformers, which we've been starting to cover here on the channel in recent videos. So here we are basically just going to drop in an image or like click to upload and then we basically just go in here and upload an image. So I just have an image here taken with my smartphone and then we're actually like just going to, to see how it creates a depth map of this one here. So this is my setup I have. Then we have some other different kind of optics in the scene and then we can basically just go, we can actually like edit our image here. If you want to crop out some regions, we can just hit this pen and then we can crop the images. We can resize it, we can flip it, rotate it, we can draw some different kind of things. But here we're just going to go with the original image and then we can just hit submit. And now we're actually going to generate this predicted depth map over here to the right. So basically the idea here is that it's using deep learning to find like depth in the image. So the depth that we will get out is actually like relative depths with respect to the camera. So again, these are only estimates if you want to like create like absolute depth, you would have to create like some kind of mapping or you need like some camera parameters from like a stereo camera of how you can go from relative depths to absolute depths in the real world. But often you will just have like a fixed environment or like a fixed setup and then you'll create some references for like these different kind of pixel intensities that we'll get out in just a second. And then you can just directly map those um, to uh, absolute depth values or like real world depth values. Again, it will all, always be estimates. So these are estimates, but here we can see that this is actually like a pretty good estimate based on the objects that we have in the scene. So I have this racket here in the foreground. We can see that the, the highest like pixel intensities here are in the foreground and the further away we are from the camera, the darker the pixels will be. So here we can see we have this racket in the foreground. So we have like a nice white color or like at least a bright color. Then when we go further away, we have some objects. We have our my monitors here. So these are a bit more gray. Uh, we have a can here, which is a bit more like brighter than compared to like the monitors here. And it just indicates that this can here is actually like in front of the two PCs or like the two monitors. Uh, we also have a cup here, which is also brighter than the two monitors. So this is actually like a really good representation of like what is actually like how is the depth in the image. And this is just based on pure uh, deep learning. So down here at the bottom, we have our predicted depth map. Then we can just do like 3D mesh reconstruction directly. So this will be our point cloud down at the bottom. And then we can actually just go down here even further and, and download our act like point cloud file. So the format here we'll get out is GLTF. So this is one of the formats that we can export like point clouds with, with, when we have this mesh reconstruction of our point cloud. Again, this file format here can be converted to like all the other different kind of formats. Uh, that we're working on in this video here or like in this channel 
uh, throughout the different kind of videos with over D and so on. So you can definitely just go into like a, a converter. You can just convert this file here to a PLY file. I've done that. And then we're going to use that PLY file um, in open for D and some other different kind of um, projects that or like applications and programs that we can use to actually do some uh, further processing on our point cloud. But here we can just scroll in. I'll just zoom in a bit here so you can like better see what is going on. So this is actually like the point cloud here we have created. Um, and we can, we can just play around with it. Again, we get this really nice depth. So we have this racket here in the foreground. We even have like the table underneath the racket. Uh, we have like some space under the racket, which you can really like see. Then we have like the mouse mat over here to the right. We still have really good information of like how is the depth acts like in the image. Then we have the monitors. We even have like this uh, V format here detected in our monitors as we can see up here at the top. So I actually have like some kind of like V format um, off my monitors, we can still see a good representation of that. We can see the cans, we still have the nice colors. Again, I have this cup here behind my keyboard. We get some occlusions here behind the racket because we can't really see like what is going on exactly behind the racket here. But again, it will just like interpolate those things and then we'll like skip to the keyboard. So this is still a really, really nice representation of depth. We just get out a relative point cloud that we can use for all, all different kind of things. So if you just want to create like some point cloud, some, some avatars, you don't really care about like absolute depth. You just want to get a point cloud of some different kind of options, uh, like objects that you're captured with your phone or some other different kind of like uh, cameras. Then you can just directly go in, use this one here and you will get out a point cloud. So now here we're just going to like download the file and then we can convert it to PLY. Now we're going to see how we can open it up in different kind of programs and libraries where we can use it in, for example, OpenPD with Python. So first of all here, we're just going to open it up with the, with the 3D object viewer that we have here on Windows. So here I'm basically just going to open up this file so we can just open up directly the DLTF file um, in uh, Windows. So we'll get in the point cloud just as we did in the preview. Um, on the Hagen, Hagen, Hagen face space. We can play around with some settings, like we can choose some different kind of themes. We can just go with the standard one, but this is a really nice tool to like play around with your point cloud, see some different kind of like um, details. We can also play like with the light rotation. So how are, the, how are the shadows in the image? So if you want to like create some texture or like some rendering with your point cloud, we can also play around with like the colors down here at the bottom. So you can tune around uh, these different kind of parameters. We can also go to RGB if you want to change the color on your point cloud. We can even like change the environment down here at the bottom. So you have a lot of different kind of options for your point cloud that you can play around with in this uh, Windows 3D viewer. So this is one of the programs I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to show you how we can actually like open it up with, uh, for example, in Jupyter Notebook or in Open4D with Python. So here we're just going to open up a Jupyter Notebook with uh, Anaconda. So I'm just going to use um, Anaconda as in all the other videos here on my channel. So now we're just going to open up this uh, Jupyter. I already created like a file here for um, for opening up this point cloud here. I'll just need to find it um, in a sec here. So we can, maybe we can just sort with last modified. Uh, so here we can see that I have my uh, IPython notebook here. So this is basically just we're going to open up like or we're going to import Open3D as O3D again. We have done all of this here in other videos, so definitely check that out. I even have like a whole tutorial on OpenPD, how we can load in point clouds, do processing techniques on it, like how we can downsample our point clouds, even do like alignment of different kind of like point clouds, um, post estimation of point clouds and so on. So I have videos about all of those things with OpenPD. It's a really nice library for doing uh, like techniques and, and applying algorithms on point clouds. We're also going to import NumPy, and then we're basically just going to load in our point cloud here. Um, where you can just read in the point cloud from the file. So I've converted my point cloud to PLY. So we just have like all the points in a file here or in the PL, uh, PLY format. I just use a converter to actually like go from the other format to PLY. You can also use like PZD or whatever you want to. But here we're just going to read in the point cloud from this path. Um, and then we're just going to like print the point cloud and we're going to print the point as an array. And then we can use from OpenPD visualization dot draw geometries. And then we just need to pass in the point cloud that we actually like want to draw or visualize here in OpenPD. So now I'm just going to run the block of code so we can actually like set up this uh, point cloud and visualize it. Here we're just going to run it. We will get up this tab here. And now we can see that we open up our point cloud in this uh, PLY format. In the foreground here, we can see like uh, the closer we are to the camera, we have this blue color here. And then the colors are changing based on like how far is it away. 
So we don't really have that many details when we lose our call information, but we can still see the racket in the foreground. Um, we lose a bit of track. We can still see the like the cop, like the can here. We lose some information about the cop, uh, but we still have our monitors down here at the at the uh, in the background. So we can use this for a lot of different kind of things. We can just do more post processing to it uh, to our point cloud. So this is just how we can open it up in one program, and then we can do like further processing to it. So that's it for this video here guys, we've been over like how we can just take a single image, we can do depth estimation on that image, and then we'll just directly convert that depth map to our point cloud. Then we have seen like different kind of like um, programs where we can open up the point cloud with, and also this OpenBD framework uh, that we can use in Python to do all sort of like post project technique, apply algorithms on it. Again, I have videos about all of it. This is just a video to show you guys like how we can just take a single image, generate a point cloud in like even like 30 seconds or something like that. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It will help me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently doing a computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like everything within computer vision, like basic image operation, camera calibration, like stereo vision. We even use stereo vision to get depth information as well. Then we're using that depth information to actually like generate point clouds with computer vision. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll see you next week guys. Bye for now.